Good afternoon, everyone. This is Mike Romali here with the off-season edition of the Hurricane Outlook and Discussion recorded on April 5th, 2023, quarter on 2.10 p.m. Eastern Time. We have a lot of new information to dive into today, so let's go and jump straight into everything. Taking a wide look across the tropical Atlantic this afternoon, it is relatively quiet as we'd expect for the early month of April. We do have this one area of upper-level disturbance that is going to be approaching Puerto Rico and is now coming up on the northern part of the island chain. So we'll be producing some heavy rainfall, potentially some flooding issues, um, but elsewise, no tropical development is expected. So places in the U.S. British Virgin Islands, of course, the northern Antilles here, Puerto Rico, could get some heavy rainfall, potential for some flooding and mudslide problems, especially in the higher elevations. Um, but elsewise, much is quiet across the tropics for today. Take a look here at the Nino 3 4 index and kind of the overall view of the sea surface temperature anomaly. This is the Nino 3.4, this area roughly in through here. It is warming up as we would expect for a developing El Nino potentially heading into summer and into the latter half of the year. But we also noticed that the Atlantic main development region is quite substantially above the long term average still. We're looking in some cases about two and a half degrees Celsius above the long term average, especially uh, towards the coast here, towards the Cabo Verde Islands and off the coast of Africa. And that is kind of nicely contributed to, again, by this warm kind of AMO pattern here. And we notice that we do have a developing El Nino potentially out here in the uh, eastern Pacific Basin. However, again, it's going to be the predictions right now are kind of just all over the place. We'll get to that here in a minute. And relatively cool waters off the coast of California here. We've had multiple storm systems moving through here over the past couple of months, really disrupting the area in through here. Now, if you take a look at the ECMWF, the European forecast for the Nino 3-4 region. So this is the area for determining... Uh, El Nino or La Nina conditions and again we're kind of entering the month of April right here and notice that all of the guidance is suggesting an El Nino going forward but I want to caution that just because the European is forecasting this doesn't mean of course that it's going to happen and I also want to point out that the European has a well-known warm bias and it famously botched 2017 and thought that was going to be an El, an El Nino year, and it turned out to not be. So I do want to caution against you know using this as gospel per se, um, but this is just some guidance to indicate it does seem like we are going to be heading at least to a warm neutral, if not a weak uh, El Nino, by August, September, and October, which is the peak months of the hurricane season. Again, it's also going to remain interesting how the Atlantic performs out here in terms of the overall water temperature above average because that could also play a role, but we'll have to see how that maintains itself throughout the next couple of months. Still a little too early to be looking out there right now. Now, in terms of exactly what's going to be happening for the Atlantic Basin, this is kind of just a first call in terms of what is going to be expected Again, this is just based on some of the analysis that I've seen, kind of looked over. And so I've really had a, a kind of a chance to look into this. And I, I think, again, with these warmer waters out here in the equatorial Pacific, we're going to start from right to left here. Um, we have, or I'm sorry, from left to right. Uh, we have, again, more tropical cyclone activity that is expected in the East Pacific Basin. This generally is going to be in the latter half of the season. I think it's still a little too early uh, to get the atmosphere in full response to that El Nino. And again, that El Nino favors the East Pacific for tropical cyclone development, but I just don't think it's going to happen in the early part of the season. Now, again, East Pacific season starts here in just about a month on May 15th, and that's also conveniently when we start getting the tropical weather outlooks from NHC for the Atlantic side. So again, season for the East Pacific starts here in just about a month, so we're about a month away from the official start there. And then moving into the Atlantic Basin, again, the Gulf of Mexico, I think, could have a busy first half of the season, given these very warm water temperatures above average in the Gulf. And again, some areas here running about two and a half, three degrees Celsius above the long-term average. And although it doesn't have a strong signal for what's going to happen 
for the MDR and of course the remainder of the season. I think that we are going to be seeing a busy first half of the season given these warm water temperatures and these cold fronts like to dig down here late in the season and just stall out here. And that's a very favored location for early season development. And then moving into the subtropics, I do think we could be seeing a slightly above average subtropics based on some of the climate forecast models we've seen and less overall tropical cyclone activity in the main development region. But I'm not so sold on the idea of this being a completely drop dead season uh, for the Atlantic. I just don't think we're going to see the MDR be totally shut out of development mainly for the fact of the matter that we just don't have El Nino conditions currently. And I think the indications are that we'll probably be running El Nino in El Nino territory by later in the season. And the atmosphere then always takes a while to respond to that. So development in the Atlantic is going to be less, but I don't think it's going to be totally shut down, especially in the MDR. Now, looking out towards what could be happening over the next couple of weeks, the GFS and some of the uh, different forecast guidance here, are suggesting an interesting picture in the Gulf of Mexico here within about the next six to seven days. Within about the next week or so, we could be talking about something interesting, but I'll, I'll kind of talk about why I don't think that's going to happen. So this is the GFS 850 millibar vorticity or the spin in the atmosphere at 5,000 feet off the ground. It's been a long time since we've looked at these maps here, uh, but uh, we have some indications that we might have to talk about something. So Again, kind of roll this out here. You notice all of the mid-latitude cyclones that kind of go over. Uh, but there's one thing that starts to happen in the Gulf of Mexico. We've got this little bit of a front, and you can kind of see that this is 90 hours from now, but you've got this front, got some cyclogenesis over here. Now, the forecast guidance is all over the place, but you just notice in this particular GFS version here, we get something that looks like a tropical cyclone to develop sometime going into next week and again i'm not so sold on this idea but there has been some forecast guidance that either suggests that we get something either out here in the atlantic here or in the gulf of mexico and again on this particular version of the gfs we get something that develops in the gulf uh, but if we notice go back to the previous run it's not even there um, and you actually have more development focused in the Gulf, or I'm sorry, in the Atlantic side. So again, I, I'm not really so sold on this idea. The 250 millibar winds, uh, so we're looking here at just about 35 uh, to 39,000 feet. We notice that again, there's our kind of trough digging in uh, within about five days. We get just enough here of some upper level divergence uh, to have a surface cyclone try to form down here. Uh, but we notice a pretty strong shear is going to be cutting across this area. We're talking upwards about 30 to 40 knots of shear. And uh, that doesn't really abate all for maybe about 6 to 12 hours. So I think the forecast guidance is probably overdoing some mass response down here leading to this cyclone to form. I just don't think this is going to happen. And I'm certainly not uh, really I'm not really concerned about this because I just don't think it's going to happen, but it is just something to monitor, at least a good reminder that we are only now just about two months away from the beginning of the 2023 Atlantic hurricane season. Now, if you haven't heard the news already, of course, uh, Ian, uh, the post report, post tropical cyclone report for Ian came out. This was upgraded to a category five hurricane. This is actually a still image uh, of Ian as it was a category five uh, not the most, uh, you know, not not really the most visually appealing Cat 5 that we've ever seen, uh, but you did have that, that trough dynamic, uh, really that sting jet there on the western side in that western eye wall uh, when recon went through, and it was determined that this was now 160 miles per hour versus 155, so, you know, 130 not, 135 knots to 140 knots. doesn't make much of a difference. It's purely academical, but this was upgraded to a Cat 5, for about six hours before landfall. Uh, it did weaken to landfall about 140 miles per hour, but still very powerful Cat 4 as it made landfall here in Florida. And of course, uh, you know, we have all the videos documenting that. I'm actually putting together a more, you know, comprehensive um, analysis on Ian and documentary. So that should be out here within the next uh, about month or so. But uh, with that being said, I do hope you have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. Of course, I am Mike Romali. I'll talk to you guys again some more over the next several days.